Okay, so we've seen that we can get energy by taking uranium and splitting it apart or by combining small things like hydrogen. So which is actually going to power the sun? Well, given the sun is mostly hydrogen and that's our biggest gain of energy, we're going to have to use that hydrogen, but we're also going to need it in enough mass and enough squishing to actually get it. That's right, because we're trying to add a nucleus, as we saw in this picture earlier, uh, that really does not like to be combined. No. So you've got our energy diagram here. So if the blue is the energy level, uh, that means that then a proton can only get this close to an existing nucleus. We need to get it right down the middle. That's right. It's going to be very hard. We're going to have to put it maybe inside a sun. Yeah. So the idea would be that you take some hydrogen and you get it really hot, so the protons are moving really fast, and you squash it to incredible density, so they're all really packed together. So if you put it inside a really densely packed hot core, that's when you have enough energy to actually get in close enough to get over that well and create nuclear fusion. So basically like you put a very thick blanket on top of it. Yep. Like say 10 to 30 kilograms worth of blanket. Yeah, we kind of know how heavy that blanket is. <laughs> yes, so the idea is that in the sun, it's roughly the central 20% that's actually doing the nuclear fusion, combining so, hydrogen. So, so most of the sun is actually not the nuclear reactor, essentially, it's just the core. Most of it is just a very thick blanket sitting really hard on that central 20% and compressing that central 20, 23%, whatever it might be, yep. to the incredible density and pressure and temperature that it needs to force these protons to get over that lip and get together. So it's giving it its extra nudge to get that lip, to get that energy. Yes, that's right. So it turns out even in the middle of the sun, with the incredible densities and temperatures, we'll talk more about them next time, still the protons don't have enough energy to make it over the lip. So they get close, but they don't get quite there. But luckily, there's a thing called quantum mechanical tunneling. As quantum mechanics, as we've seen many times in this course, is a bit weird. And one thing is that a particle can jump a quantum tunnel from one place to another without going through the intervening space. So if you can get the protons pretty close, they can, quant with very small probability, but it does occasionally happen, they can quantum tunnel from there to there, and oh, now we're inside. And even though it's small probability because you are firing so many of them so densely, so close, you get enough of them to get in. That's right. So thanks to quantum tunneling, you can get this to work as long as you have temperatures of like more than 15 million degrees and densities of 150 tons per cubic meter or thereabouts. Which is interesting, interesting, interesting information for the sun. That's right. So how does this actually work? Well, what have you got here? You've got two hydrogen atoms, and you're trying to combine them to form. What's that? Well, that wouldn't make sense, because that would be two hydrogen. Yeah, and that's not one of the stable isotopes. No, it doesn't like to be two hydrogen. So something else has to happen here. Yeah, well, there's two protons together. It'll be helium-2. Helium-2, two. Two, but there's no neutron. So something else has to happen with these yeah. protons. So this is incredibly unstable. So this yeah. actually happens a lot. Quite often, two protons will come together, yep. form helium-2, but it'll immediately break apart. So it's going to decay into other things. It'll immediately break apart just into the two protons again. Yeah. But very occasionally, for that very brief moment when the helium-2 is together, one of the protons will decay into a neutron plus an electron. So that's what we were talking about plus before, neutrino, yeah. where you can actually have one of those change their energy levels. So now you have a proton and a neutron yeah. making you hydrogen, but you also have this other stuff. That's right. Now this decay, in the brief moment where these things are together, one of them can turn into a neutron, yep. um, takes on average many billions of years before it happens for any given... So it's a very, very rare rate. This is what slows the entire sun down. If it wasn't so slow, the sun could burn its energy much faster. So because this process is kind of the bottleneck, this is what's slowing down the production, essentially, of energy on the sun. When I first read this, I thought, well, this is going to... If it were lucky, this is so slow, otherwise the sun would burn all its energy exactly. in a short time. But in fact, if there was a fast way for it to happen, the sun wouldn't need to be so dense. So That's the sun true. would just rearrange itself and still burn things slowly. So it's actually... Balances out in the Balances end. out, yes. The sun would adjust itself to make whatever needed to be happen, happen. But anyway, it produces a positron. A positron is like an electron, but has a positive charge. It's an antimatter, it's an anti-electron. So is it the same charge? Same charge, but positive rather than negative, yep. and same mass. Yep. And this positron will fly out, and it will combine with one of the electrons that's floating around. The two will annihilate each other, because if you have matter and antimatter, a famous thing is if you're made of matter, I'm made of antimatter, and we shake okay. hands, 
boom, lots of gamma rays, That's enough right. energy to destroy the world. And so this has to be the same mass because the proton is not the same mass as the electron, even though there's the same opposite right. charge. It also produces a particle called a neutrino, which is, we'll talk much more about later, a very slippery customer. That's right. So this now gives us, what's that? One so proton and one neutron? Hydrogen. Yes, but not normal hydrogen. It's got extra, normal hydrogen is just hydrogen one. This is hydrogen two. Oh, so this is hydrogen two. So it's we now G have something different. Yes, and normally the isotopes are just given numbers, like helium-3, but right. this isotope is so common it's got a name, which is so deuterium. That's right. So it's hydrogen with an extra neutron. Um, so in fact, what happens, if you write down in equations, now what we've got here is often these things are written down with two numbers. The bottom one is the atomic number, which is the number of protons, and the top number is the atomic mass, which is the sum of neutrons and protons. Yep. So hydrogen has one proton and atomic mass of one, so it's just got one. Combine two of them to make, well, deuterium. Deuterium, yeah. But this is two total and two protons, so. Yeah. Two protons will technically be some weird isotope of yeah, helium or something right. like that, but it won't last very long. So it decays. It'll decay into one of the neutrons will turn into a proton, plus emitting a positron plus a neutrino. Yep. And the positron will combine with an electron to produce two gamma rays and a fair bit of energy in the process. And this is the important key, right? Mm, this right. is the important key, is we want energy out. Yes. But now we're that, also left with other stuff now. Yeah, that's not enough by itself. Yep. Uh, so we've now got deuterium. And we're now going to throw another one into the mix. Another proton combines, and now you get, what's this one? It's got two protons and one neutron, so that's two protons, that's so helium. Yep, so we're just going to get a helium-2. Well, it's going to be helium-3. Helium-3. Sorry, say that's that again. I, I, was, <laughs> I was looking at the two. Yeah, anyways, that's right. Yeah. So you've got deuterium plus hydrogen gives you helium-3 yep. plus a gamma ray and some more energy. That's which right. is, again, what we want. But we're still not at kind of our normal helium yet. That's right. Um, and then you can combine two of these. So we get now two protons, two neutrons. So that's normal helium. That's our normal helium. Helium-4. But we also then have these two other things that are coming out of it. Two Protons, which are hydrogen nuclei, which will go off and join all the rest of the hydrogen in the, in the process. So they just go flow off in the rest of the hydrogen. We've created helium, and we've created energy. And this is actually where most energy comes out, this last stage. Yeah, because this is actually a lot bigger than that previous reaction. That's right. This is called the PP1 chain. So we can... Um, there's two, two ways things happen. Sort of roughly 90% of the energy the sun comes out by that. There's another chain where you... First step is the same, you combine two protons to form, um, very briefly, helium-2, which yep. then combines to deuterium. Um, that now combines to form um, helium-3. And now you combine helium-3 with helium-4 that already exists there yep. to make lithium-7, which breaks down to form, that's beryllium-7, which seven breaks down to form lithium-7, seven, which then are complicated chains of reactions. This is called the PP2 chain, and this is, you know, so 13% or so of the power in the sun. So some combination of these two chains, they all start off in the same way, they go through the same bottleneck. Yep. Uh, though these are what produce the power that powers the sun. But they're also pr and producing new elements in the sun as well. Yes, helium in the end, helium That's right. four. So the sun eventually is gonna convert that hydrogen, turn it into energy and helium. That's right. So we've now finally come to get an understanding of perhaps the biggest mystery of the sun. We've, we've worked out what it's made of, and at last we know what its power source is. This enormous mass of the sun compresses the hydrogen so much in the center that things can jump over the potential well, Create fall down, this nuclear reaction. and by this rather complicated set of reactions, they combine to form, by two different chains, helium-4 and reduce energy. Yep. And that energy is enough to power the sun for billions of years. Sorry, I didn't know if you wanted to cut there or not. That's a good place to cut? Yeah, yeah I, sorry, it just felt like a natural place to cut. I didn't know if you wanted me to say anything or not. Sorry. Maybe we'll just re yeah. resume again now and yeah. just say that this is... Um, so, so now, do you, cause do you so want to bring it back to all the other things that we just talked about with the sun? That was the other thing I was going to say. So you, maybe you that come yeah. in and say, so, so this is where the energy yeah, yeah, okay, in my yeah. life comes from and everything else. Yeah, okay, so, okay, so. so now that we know it powers the sun, we also know that it, what powers everything. So sun, as you said, powers energy on the earth that creates the plants, that creates the things that we eat and the plants that we eat. 
And, and not even on Earth, right? On Mars or, or wherever else in our solar system, this is the power source or energy source of the solar system. So the great mystery of the age of the sun is resolved. We now know what to power it for the length of time the physiologists yep. weren't being stupid. They had the right answer after all. Um, the one thing that's still missing is what keeps the Earth hot inside, because remember, that was also dating. That's true, and, and that was also off from what the geologists said. And in that case, it turns out it's because there's small amounts of uranium in the Earth, and as they break down small atoms, they keep the Earth going, keep the Earth molten inside over, the, again, the billions of years. So these little nuclear reactions are working on the inside of... The fusion powers the Sun and the fission powers the Earth, and fission is much weaker than fusion, which is yep. why the Earth is not as bright as the Sun. Um, and this is what's keeping the age of the Earth so long, it's given us time to evolve, and it's what's powering our bodies right now.